Sometimes you hear about something, like a movie or a dish at a new restaurant, and you keep hearing how great it is. You build up an idea of what it's going to be like in your mind. Sometimes you build it up in your mind so much that the reality of it could never quite live up to the enormous expectations that you've built up. I've been hearing about the honey badger for a long, long time. It would seem like almost an eternity. And I've built up some pretty big shoes in my mind for this thing to try and fill up. So when Shooting Surplus offered me the opportunity to review the honey badger, of course I jumped on it. I had so many questions, as I'm sure you do. Isn't it just an AR-15? Why does the buttstock look weird? What's the big deal? It's a gun named after what is considered the meanest, most fearless animal in the world. The damn thing eats cobras. Does this thing really live up to all that? Well, I think we should start at the beginning. You may think that a gun as new and as hot as the honey badger doesn't have a history, but it definitely does, and it's rather interesting. The Honey Badger was originally conceived by Advanced Armament Corporation and the brainchild of Kevin Brittingham back in 2010. Kevin Brittingham founded AAC, which back in the day was by far the largest suppressor company and working with U.S. Special Forces on many projects, including one to replace the aging, although I'd argue very gracefully, MP5SD. For those that don't know, that's an integrally suppressed variant of the MP5. The goal was to have one weapon that could be as quiet as the MP5SD and great for close quarters use, yet at the same time have the same weapon that could be used at longer ranges and still be lethal at distances similar to the M4 where the MP5SD and the 9mm round are no longer effective. To further the wish list, U.S. Special Forces also wanted the gun to have the familiarity of use from the M4 with the compactness of the MP5. Most people would say you can't have your cake and eat it too and that's impossible out of a single weapon system. It just can't be done. That wish list is too long. But not the engineers at AAC. The first thing they did was to take a look at the cartridge, because there's not a single round that can accomplish both of the required tasks. Then AAC gave birth to the 300 Blackout. This amazing round accomplishes a lot of things. First off, with 300 Blackout, you can run a 30 caliber bullet through an AR-15 or M4 platform with the only change to the rifle being the barrel. It uses the same bolt and magazines as the M4, and along with that, the magazines maintain their 30 round capacity. Most importantly, 300 Blackout comes in two main varieties. Subsonic rounds, which are heavier and work great for close quarters combat and are extremely quiet with the use of a suppressor, as well as supersonic rounds that are effective to much greater distances. Now that there was a cartridge that could hit the wish list, Kevin Brittingham and the mad scientists at AAC could develop the rifle. They came up with what is basically an M4 with a very short barrel and a suppressor that was inside the handguard, and a proprietary buffer tube and collapsible stock that was very reminiscent of the MP5. Aesthetically, the AAC Honey Badger is close to the Q version, but some key enhancements have been made. But there's still more to the story before we get to Q. Kevin Brittingham sold AAC to Remington, and they made the brilliant decision not to bring the Honey Badger to market. Remington. So many great decisions. In that time, Kevin Brittingham went to SIG to get their suppressor line up and running, and it wasn't without notice that while he was there, the MCX was brought to market. Many people, including myself, thought that the MCX was as close as the consumer market would ever get to the Honey Badger. Then, after completing his time at SIG, Kevin Brittingham started his own company, Just One Letter. Q, and answered the prayers of gun nerds everywhere, and brought an improved version of the elusive honey badger to the consumer market. 
so I think we need to deal with the elephant in the room and face the fact that this is a 16 inch honey badger and that's not really how the platform was intended. But at least at the time this video is being made, honey badgers are harder to come by than an honest politician and I'm so grateful to Shooting Surplus for the privilege and the opportunity to review this honey badger. But like I said, there are several variations and the true intention was to have a 7 inch barrel and a suppressor under the handguard making this the purest honey badger. This is also the only way you can get the actual honey badger silencer. Q makes a specific silencer for this model with a smaller diameter than their other suppressors to fit under the handguard. Q also makes a 7 inch barrel with a cherry bomb muzzle brake so you can attach the trash panda or the thunder chicken, Q's lineup of quick attach suppressors, which are awesome by the way. This is my favorite setup and how I'd like to get the honey badger for myself. Personally, I'm not really into having a suppressor under my handguard and I like being able to easily get the suppressor off in case I want to put it on another rifle. Plus it's just so damn short and so damn sexy. Of extreme interest is now Q has teamed up with SB Tactical to make a pistol honey badger, which of course means there's no need to pay a $200 tax stamp, no waiting for months on end, and you can take the gun across state lines with no hassles. While it's great that Q is now offering a honey badger pistol, this new variation should keep them on back order from now until I'm in adult diapers. It is awesome that they are offering the pistol because it will bring this venerable platform to a whole new group of shooters that aren't willing to go down the SBR road. To give you an idea of the size a honey badger is supposed to be, I also got this nice little piece from Shooting Surplus. This is a Noveski Ghetto Blaster, and it's similar to the honey badger in many ways and different in a few. We'll get into that further in another video. But for the purposes of this video, we're just going to use it more or less as a size demonstration just to show you how compact the honey badger is. But keep in mind, one of the ways they differ is the ghetto blaster is actually one inch longer than a short barreled honey badger. One of the most amazing things you immediately notice when you pick up the honey badger is the weight. This thing is insanely light. Everything that Q builds is light, whether it's a silencer, a muzzle brake, or a gun, if it says Q on the side, it will be extremely light. They cut out all the pork. They meticulously go through every single aspect and part and use the lightest things that they can use that still work well. For instance, the Honey Badger ships with OK Industries Surefeed magazine. There are a ton of fancier magazines available and they could have went with any of them, but they went with Surefeed because it works extremely well and it's the lightest available. We went over the models before, but basically you have the SBR and the pistol that come in at four pounds and eight ounces. That's insane. I have handguns that weigh more than that. The model with the specific Honey Badger suppressor weighs in at only five pounds and six ounces, and that's the rifle and the suppressor. The 16 inch model that is being featured in this video weighs in at only five pounds, seven ounces, which again is extremely light for a full size 16 inch rifle. In comparison, a Daniel Defense DDM4 V7 weighs in at 6.2 pounds and a BCM Recce 16 weighs in at 6.1 pounds and those are pretty light AR-15s. So Q has them both beat by over half a pound. That may not seem like much, but if you end up needing to carry a rifle for an extended amount of time or just want to be able to move from target to target quicker, a half a pound can be quite a bit. All of Q's stuff is so light it virtually floats. There are a ton of people out there trying to build their own knockoff honey badger. Well, just stop it. You can't. But what I constantly hear is the paint colors are so hard to match to get the distinctive and unique look of the honey badger. 
There's a reason you're having a hard time matching the paint to the honey badger, and that's because there is no paint on the honey badger, not a single drop. You see, paint is an inferior product, and Q steers clear of anything inferior. No matter how tough you make it, paint is still paint and it can be scratched. That's why Q doesn't use it. The receiver on the Honey Badger is clear anodized 7075 aluminum and that's where you get the hard to match gold honey like color from. It's also why you might get slight variations in the color. The handguard is clear anodized 6061 aluminum to give you that gray look. I can also say that this finish is remarkably tough. I haven't been exactly easy on this gun and it still looks perfect. Usually through testing and just running guns as much as I do, they get little scuffs on them, but this thing still looks immaculate. Good news for shooting surplus. Let's break the Badger down feature for feature and I think we'll start with the buttstock because it's probably the most significant feature. The key to the compact size of the Honey Badger is from the stock assembly which is much shorter than a traditional AR buffer tube. This causes some changes internally and externally. First off, the stock moves on these two rails and is activated by this button. It only has two positions, all the way in and all the way out. But I will say that it is very comfortable for me and the vast majority of the people who shot the Badger. The question came up on social media how these rails are holding up after some use. I would say that they're holding up extremely well. They too are clear anodized 7075 aluminum, which is much stronger than any paint. And as you can see, the wear from the stock is very minimal and this thing has been used a ton. You may have to hold the Honey Badger slightly different than a traditional AR. The cheek rest is a little forward of where you would typically find it. But all you have to do is put the stock up on your shoulder, lean forward into the gun, and rest your cheek on the cheek rest. It might take a minute to get used to, but once you do, this slightly modified position is actually very comfortable. It lets you get more into the gun and actually gives the package an even more compact feel. After shooting like this for a while, I'm actually wishing more guns had a stock set up similar to this. Like I said, the stock moves on two rails that go into the frame much like the MP5. This is amazingly cool to see on an AR style rifle. However, and we got this question many times on social media, this requires the upper and lower to be milled out to receive those rails. This means that the Q Honey Badger furniture is completely proprietary and will not work on a traditional upper and lower. So once again, no matter how hard you try, you can't really build a Honey Badger. Internally, there are differences as well. The recoil spring is much smaller in diameter and rides on a rod inside the shortened buffer tube. There's also a plug to catch the spring in the bolt carrier. I really like the engineering here and this is a great solution on how to shorten the buffer assembly in the simplest way possible. This does however make assembly a little bit more difficult. Disassembly however is easy, the thing's going to blow up. And the Honey Badger does not hinge open like a traditional AR. A couple quick tips when you go to assemble your Honey Badger. First off, patience is a virtue. The stock must be in the rear position. You'll only try that once. It's easier with the hammer down. And the rear pin is going to go first, kind of opposite the way you do a normal AR. This is the manual's method of doing it. You're going to put the barrel on something flat and you're just going to slowly work the spring onto its guide rod until you can lock the receivers together. Then there's this method that I saw on Q's Instagram page, and I actually like this better. You take the plug out of the bolt, put it on the spring, and push the spring back into the buffer tube, and just hold the plug there with your finger. Position your finger so you can remove it easily. Take the upper receiver, work it back so it will catch the plug, and quickly remove your finger. It may sound more difficult, but it actually works better for me. 
It's really not as difficult as it might look. It's just one of those things that's kind of hard to do on camera. So I heard another reviewer say that the stock on the Honey Badger seemed delicate, and I would tend to disagree. The stock is as tough as it needs to be for its intended use. Now is it strong enough to use as a blunt force weapon like an M1 Garand? No. So if your intention is to bash some skulls once you run out of ammo, the Honey Badger might not be for you. However, it is more than strong enough to hold up to the use of the gun for many years in my opinion. We ran a ton of rounds through this Honey Badger and never had an issue with it, and we were not the first reviewer to use this rifle. Moving on, as I said, the upper and lower are proprietary and beautifully machined and the quality is evident as you would see in any very high-end AR. The magazine well is absolutely massive to help speed up those reloads. The forward assist has been removed for weight and really, when was the last time you used a forward assist anyway? And the shell deflector has also been minimized. The trigger is the American Trigger AR Gold Flat Trigger and this thing is pretty impressive. I love the profile of the flat blade with just this perfect little curve at the bottom which creates the perfect rest for your finger. It also looks amazing which never hurts. This thing is crazy light, weighing in at an astonishing 2 pounds. This thing is insanely light, my only complaint, and it's a very small one, is there is almost no discernible reset, neither tactile nor audible. Now that's not a big deal to me, and if it is a big deal to you, it can be swapped out with any AR trigger. There's also a Radian charging handle that's badged Q. These are always great and work extremely well. The handguard is M-locked. Underneath you'll see another little ingenious piece of engineering. The gas block is held on with a nut with threads on the barrel. Simple and awesome idea. You'll also find an adjustable gas block, a very unique barrel nut, and an ingeniously simple way to hold the handguard on. Every single part of the Honey Badger has been gone through and been made better through expert engineering. All the steel parts, like the button to activate the stock, the QD mounts, and the muzzle brake are heat treated, which gives them a very tough finish that also has a very unique gold look, but I assure you it's not rust. So how does it suppress? It's a gun made by a suppressor company. How do you think it suppresses? This gun is amazing suppressed. It runs flawlessly, it's quiet. Not sure if it's intentional, but the proprietary buffer system in the Honey Badger is very quiet, much quieter than a standard AR, and you don't get any of that spring sound you get from a traditional AR. It ran all the subsonic we fed it wonderfully, and you just get this quiet, deep thud from the gun, and you can easily hear the bullet hitting the target, dirt, or whatever else over the sound of the gun. We tested it with the Q Trash Panda, which is an amazing suppressor. It works phenomenally well, not only on the Honey Badger, but other firearms too. And amazingly enough, it's also available at Shooting Surplus. The Honey Badger comes with Q's quick attach muzzle brake, the Cherry Bomb. This thing is an awesome and impressive feat of engineering on its own. First off, it's completely symmetric, therefore it doesn't require any timing, thus eliminating the need for shims, which can cause a suppressor to get misaligned leading to baffle strikes. The Q Trash Panda or Thunder Chicken can be easily screwed on and snugged up to the taper. That taper does a lot of things. It helps align the suppressor. Once it gets hot, it helps keep the suppressor on and prevents it from walking off. On top of that, the taper lock prevents the threads from carbon, so your suppressor will never get carbon locked to the adapter. On top of that, the cherry bomb also works impressively well as a muzzle brake, so go figure, I guess you can have it all.
When you tell me about roughly a 5 pound AR that shoots 300 blackout, accuracy is not the first thing that comes to mind. However, the Honey Badger is lights out accurate. We made some amazing shots with this thing throughout testing, and basically, you just point and tap that two pound trigger and the Badger will take care of the rest. Yeah, that was a hit. I, I know it was I a hit. I told you where I was holding that. We ran this honey badger like we stole it, because the way I figured it, this isn't my gun anyway, and as much as I want to find out if this gun is worth your money, I want to find out if it's worth my money as well. Damn. Total rounds are approaching 1500. Now to be fair, I ran it to 1000 rounds with some of that being suppressed and I did clean it. Not because it was starting to malfunction, but basically because it looked like stuff was growing on the inside of it. Also, I wanted to be fair, and you really shouldn't run a direct impingement gun that long without a cleaning. I was beyond impressed with the reliability of the Honey Badger. We fed it a diet of whatever 300 blackout we could find, from match grade Hornady to all different makes of subsonic and even some cheap reloads. It just ate everything up and asked for more, because Honey Badger don't care. Furthermore, this speaks to the durability and quality of the Honey Badger. I shot this thing a ton, but I'm actually not the first reviewer with it. Last Line of Defense actually had this same gun before me, and he put a fair amount of rounds through it to do his review. I also understand the guys from Shooting Surplus may have shot this Honey Badger a bit as well, just to see what all the hype was about. I say all that to bring up the point that this Honey Badger is working phenomenally and holding up perfectly, and it has a serious amount of rounds through it. In fact, this particular Honey Badger probably has more rounds through it than most people who buy one will ever run through their rifle, and like I said, it's still working perfectly. One thing that is hard to convey is the feeling a gun gives you. The Honey Badger just feels good, and I have to admit it that I think a lot of that great feeling comes from the weight. This thing is just so light and so well balanced, even with a suppressor. The fact that it functions so well is so accurate, and all the parts come together to give you a rifle and a feeling that is so much greater than just the combination of its parts. You can move with this thing easily, again due to the weight. It points and shoots so naturally you almost don't even need to think about it. I will say that this is easily the best 300 blackout rifle ever conceived, and it should be since it was developed by the team that developed the round. I will say this review has changed my mind on 300 blackout. I have a couple 300 blackout rifles and I've always liked them okay. But when you see what the round is capable of in a rifle like the Honey Badger, it's a completely different world. I have a 300 Blackout AR that is an SBR, and I can say it doesn't hold a candle to the Honey Badger. They aren't even in the same league. Some people look at the Honey Badger and say that it's just another AR-15, but I assure you it is so much more than that. It uses what is right with the AR and improves on it with proprietary parts, superior engineering, and a weight and balance that is astonishing and unmatched. At the beginning of this whole thing, I said that I had some almost unobtainable expectations for the Q Honey Badger, and I really expected to be let down. But I can say, not only did the Honey Badger live up to the hype, but it actually exceeded my lofty expectations. But you think the Honey Badger cares? Only problem is, I still don't own a Q Honey Badger, but when I do, I'll be getting one from Shooting Surplus. These guys have a huge selection of the absolute best firearms on the market today. 
They also have huge orders in with Q, so you probably have the best chance of getting some Q unobtainium through them, and my list is long. Have you guys seen the fix? Well guys, that was a long one, and if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, be sure to smash that subscribe button and follow us on social media so you can keep track of what's going to be reviewed next. If you like what we do here, consider going over to Patreon and helping support the channel. Even just a buck a month would go a long way to help feeding things like this honey badger, because boy was it hungry. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching.